Hi there, uh, this is uh, training class 335 and we're going to be talking about the CPC server and tasker and task objects today. Uh, so uh, you'll, you, we're going to run, run through the presentation folder right now, or presentation. Um, on screen here, uh, if we look, let's see, we're going to follow the details of the, of the class is going to talk about what the server object is, what it, what it does. Uh, how it's configured, um, tasker and task object configurations, how the server performs tasking, and also some uh, additional considerations of that. So um, this was a, a slide that was on one of the previous, uh, I think the intro to, to CPC class, and just to refresh your, your memory that we have a two applications running on a, on a PC. We have the, the CPC object server and then the client, and the client is basically all the screens that you're that, that you would look at, anything visual that you're seeing is a, is a client application. And then the, the server is basically a very very small formed um, uh, application which, which is doing all the control and all the data saving and, and all the other things of the system. And basically, uh, we're gonna be focusing on, on a specific object within the CPC you know, server, which is called the server object, okay? And uh, so down here, so, so the server object, you're going to find it here um, in, a, in a tree. And if I bring up CPC, I, I'll actually show you here. Um, the server object is here. And, and basically, you can, you can see that we're actually tasking right now. This is moving. Um, so back to our, oops, can't edit that. Didn't try to edit that. Um, so if we, oops, I don't know why that's doing that. Let's see. I come back to my thing. So the server object is responsible for performing all the all the processing of the of the of the tasker objects. Basically, the, the server is the ex executor of, of the actual process of control, um, and it handles also all the all the requests for, from the clients, different client PCs that are looking for information. Um, CPC is a single threaded application, uh, and and as such, it has one processing thread that that has to pass two different users of that of that threads. So um, even though you might have four cores and, and four um, you know processors on your on your computer, CPC is only really going to use one of them, one thread. And the reason that, that we use one thread and not multiple threads is, is that we want all the clients to to be looking at the same data uh, in, in the object structure. And multiple multiple threads can't look at, at the at equivalent data. So so that's just how it's it was set up. Um, the server object basically passes its its thread, its processing thread, to to the other to uh, other users, and and one one user is is the tasker object, and the tasker object is that object which does the sequencing of of control. Okay, so so that when when the server passes that execution thread to a to a tasker, we we call that a that thread a token, and and when you pass it, it it's considered token passing. Okay, um, each tasker then gets that token and does a specific task, and then passes it back to the to the uh, to the server. At which point, the server goes through, goes through each of the taskers, and then comes over and addresses the the client uh, interaction. So, if if any clients are looking for information, it'll pass that thread over to to handle all of those functions. Okay, so here's the here's the server. There, these are, these are some of the basic properties. We have the tasking enabled, which which gets gets turned false or true. Um, once it's true, you're going to see a, a task frequency, which is the number of ultimate downstream tasks that, that are performed per second. The server clock is updated every second, I believe, and that's basically the at the time um, on the on the PC, which is the attached server. Auto save uh, enabled. Basically tells the server go ahead and save the objects.g file at a certain time interval, and normally this is set for for like one minute or thirty seconds, and represents the a snapshot in time of the current process. So this is how we do uh, automatic restarts after power loss. Is is the the computer will will be saving objects.g file every minute or so, and then when it boots back up, it it's going to load up exactly the the, the configuration and the real-time real process which occurred at the time of the last save. 
um, and last save time is, is displayed here. And then we have auto backup, which is basically, even though we're saving the objects.g file to its main location, we, we might want to create backup copies of that. And by, by putting a backup copy file and path here, you're actually instructing the, the system with a, with a backup interval to, to um, store a, a backup copy of the objects. And what, what it will actually do is it'll create a different version of this file for every day of, of the month. So you would typically see about 30, 31 um, backup copies in your, in your folder. Um, or in your, in, in this case, the root directory where we're pointing to. And, the, and each of the files will be named day underscore the, the, the day of the month underscore objects backup dot G, okay? Um, and client priority is an important thing. Basically, when the client is given the, the token to, or when the, when the server is, starts addressing client interactions, what it does is it goes into a, a very quick loop, um, which is basically a single for next loop, and it'll stay there for for this amount of iterations before moving on and and going back to the tasker uh, processing. So, so that that value, the higher the value, the the more responsive, the more time you're, you're going to be giving to the clients to, to grab information. It'll make the clients more snappy, but it'll also slow down the the, the server. And the PC name is the PC name of that thing. Um, uh, on startup is again not a configuration, but this is a a quick script which is run when the when the when the CPC server starts, and then on exit is obviously when you get out of CPC if you want to do something prior to getting out. So um, so the tasker object. So if you look here, we have uh, in this configuration on this, you you'll see I've got two taskers, uh, one here and one here. Now I might if if I have a multi equipment. Uh, application, I might have multiple autoclave objects, and each one would, would have its own tasker or multiple taskers, okay? So you can see that underneath the, ta so every tasker has task objects underneath that, and basically it's a sequential, it's a, it's a sequencing um, operation. So so the tasker will, will perform the first task, the second task, third task, fourth task, and then loop around and then re recycle, okay? So uh, a tasker manages the, the processing of individual task objects in order to create a, a, a cyclical sequence necessary to, com to complete the actual control system. The tasker object will only perform the functions when it gets the token from the server. Uh, so that when it gets a, a, a token, that's considered its time slice, so it, or we call it a slice. So basically, um, that that operation of, of getting a token and then doing a task is considered a slice. Um, the the tasker will return the token after that you know single task is completed, or if it's performing multiple um, underlying sub method uh, calls, it's whenever when any one of those one method you know sub methods are are uh, completed. Now. Um, once once that's done, it'll it'll pass the token back. But you can you can set guaranteed time slice to actually increase that amount of time that the that the, that the token stays with that with that tasker. Um, that's a way of, of really speeding up taskers. But it also will create uh, hangs in your pro in your uh, client. It'll 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 seem sluggish. So typically we don't use guaranteed time slice. But but if if we do, it, it it'll be a very small number. It, it might be 0 0.001 seconds or one millisecond or two millisecond, where we're saying, hey, when you get the token, keep it for two milliseconds. Um, if you make that too big, you're gonna you're gonna see problems with your with your clients. Um, and obviously, as I showed you, there can be multiple taskers in a CPC configuration. Different taskers can operate at different speeds. You you, you might have one going slowly and one going quickly, and so you can kind of regulate that. And the tasker object has uh, um, about 10 or 8 uh, uh, properties. The name of the tasker, it doesn't have to be called tasker, but, but we typically call uh, the, the main tasker tasker. Uh, you can turn them on and off. You can, you can stop that sequential operation by, by, by turning it true or false. Um, account is an automatic, automatically generated by the system, and it indicates it's a pointer, which it's, a, it's basically a marker indicating what under underlying task was performed the last time the, the token was it was passed to it so that when when a new token comes in or the or the, the current token 
it can say, oh, I was working on, on the fifth task, now I'm going to move on to the sixth task, okay? Uh, delay time is a way of regulating the, the operation of, of, of the tasker. You, you can tell it that to delay, meaning halt all execution of that tasker for a certain amount of time and then perform the tasker function and then delay again. So it's, it's, a, it's a time which is, which is basically put at the beginning of a, of a task you know, sequence. So um, total time is, is a time be, between each of the, of the slices from the server. Well, actually, that's, that's incorrect. But total time is, is basically how much time it, it has taken to go through all tasks of the tasker, okay? So total time would be, um, would include every task and every subtask one cycle through how much time that it that, that it's taken and then the whoops and that performance is actually if I add up all the individual task times what how much time that that takes now why why total time might be different than performance is you might have a delay time in there in in which case the delay would be added to performance and to to come up with a, a longer total time guaranteed time slice is basically a, an amount of amount of seconds which is going to dedicate a certain amount of time for that tasker when it gets a token. Minimum task frequency is a way of re slowing down a, a, a uh, tasker and it really tells it, hey, don't do any more than 50 underlying tasks in one second. So um, now that's not task objects, that's underlying tasks. So if a task object is is asking to, to run a method, which is a plural method, which is then taking that token down to children methods, then we're talking about the ultimate children count as opposed to the, the task count. And uh, you can also tell the tasker, don't pass back the token at all um, until you've, you've done all the tasks under the tasker in one slice, okay? And that's, that's done rarely used, but it's, it's used when I wanna basically have a very quick operation of a bunch of thing, a bunch of tasks, and then uh, typically, that that's going to be used where, where we where we utilize a delay time. Okay. And under each tasker is a task object. So you're going to find that here in this guy. If I go under tasker, these are task objects, and, and you can see that they're configured with a with a method call to another object. So this one input read will go to dot autoclave dot inputs backslash do read method, which is here the do read method, and that do read method. In, a, um, in essence, fires off a method call to each of the children do read methods, which ultimately fire off a, a call to the I.O. child do, do reads. So sort of a propagating method call. Um, and, and, and those task objects are, are basically fired or executed by the, by the tasker object. When the tasker is enabled, you're going to be uh, running these individual tasks. When it's disabled, it'll stop running those individual tasks. Um, so, the, so the task object takes the token and runs the targeted object method, which is right here. Um, if, if that method represents a single operation, then the token will be passed back immediately back to the task object, which will pass it back to the, to the tasker object, which passes it back to the server object, okay? Um, if the targeted object happens to be a plural uh, object, in, in this case, inputs, okay? So if the class name is inputs or outputs or alarms or something like that, um, then the processing thread uh, token will, will be passed to the parent, to this inputs object, then passed down to the child uh, object of that parent, and it'll perform a task on the child. And that represents one task, uh, ultimate task, uh, for, you know, when we're, when we're, when we're talking about uh, a actual method call. So basically, what that means is that that it will not uh, passing a token to an to an inputs object will not guarantee that you're going to go through all inputs in one time slice. It'll actually only do one of the underlying input object calls, and then pass the token back out, so that the next time the token comes through, it'll go to the next input, and then back out, and the next input after that. So, so that's that's um, those ultimate children that are being executed, those are considered sub-methods, okay? So, so it isn't the main method here to the parent, but it's a sub-method of that. It's a, it's a child method, okay? And so uh, 
obviously you, you, you can enable or disable it. You, you have your, your method call. Um, now, connect to next is a, is a option which is useful when you want to tell that task object, don't send the token back, send it on to my, to my uh, you know, sibling or, or the, the next task object below me. Why, why you would do that is, in certain cases, you want to block um, any client interactions between certain tasks. And we do that when, when we're, typically we do that when we, we have a recipe processing object that which, which you know, sets a set point, and then we do an output calc, which, which calculates all the outputs, but then we're going to, in our script, maybe make some changes to those output calculations and do some overrides. Well, if, if I allow the token to be passed back in between that, back to the server, then, then you, you might have a case where the clients update a screen and show set points that actually, or output values, which have, which have actually been disabled in the, in the scripting. And so that what they'll do is they'll, they'll blink on and off, or you know, usually you know, things like heat enable and pressure enable, you'll, the, the light will blink on, blink off, indicating that, that, that you're updating the screen before you've actually made a uh, modification to, this, to the scripts. So the way that we typically uh, interrupt that is, is we'll, right, right after input read, we're gonna use connect to next to the recipe processor through to output calc, through to the, to the main script, and then from then on, we don't need to connect to next, okay? Um, and the performance is, the, is how quickly that specific task object takes to, to calculate its, or execute its, its method. So in the case of a plural object, that's gonna be the time it takes to execute all the children. So it might be multiple slices that it's taken to do that, but it'll add up all those all those performances of each child, and then that'll be the performance of the task object. And the start time is basically used by the system. It's, it's, it's not used by you, okay? So we talk about plural objects again. Um, there are only a few plural objects that, that have underlying, that, that are considered in a plural mode when we're doing tasking, okay? And these are basically designed so that when the token passes to the parent object, the parent sends the token down to the child, and the child's method is is called, and that 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 ultimately is one task when it comes to token passing. Okay, um, so in a plural object like it, like inputs, outputs, alarms, you will have there those methods, and we and we and we look at do read, do calc, do send, and calculate for the alarms. Basically, the token passes to the parent um, via the the task object. And then the parent passes the token down to the child, which in the case of inputs would be an input object. Then once that input is read, just one input, it passes the token back to the input's parent, which passes it back to the task object, which passes it back to the tasker, which passes it back to the server. So that represents one pass through that one slice, but you're only handling one input at a time, okay? So so um, there are only three of these which are, which exist in, in you know, CPC. The inputs object, the outputs, and the alarms will, will function that way. All other objects, even if they have a plural name, all other objects will, will complete the entire, its, its entire process in one slice, okay? It, it won't pass things back when, it, when a child gets executed. Okay, um, now, on a on an actual task object, there is a there's a property all sub methods in slice. Okay, and that is a that is basically telling it that um, so in, instead of going down and allowing that the first input, for instance, to calculate and then send the token back, then on the next slice get the second input and the next you know slice get the get the third input. You can instruct the the task object to to go ahead and perform all those sub methods, all those child methods in one slice. And, and by turning it to, to true, you're gonna speed up the, the, the performance. Here, here you can see it's 0.168 when, when it's false and 0 0.0004, 365 times faster when it's true. And you can see it in real, real time here. So here I'm, I've, I've got my input reading and, uh, and I'm at, Actually, well, let's 
but let's go to something like alarms. That's a better word. Okay, so so here I am false, and you can see it's 0 0.18, 0 0.18 by by clicking all time, all you know sub methods in slice. Now we're going to be calculating all the alarms in one slice, so it's very quick because it doesn't have to pass the token back, go all the way through all the tasker assignments again, and come back and do the next one, and then go you know re re repeat that for each child. Um, you can use all sub methods in slice to to speed up the ultimate tasker performance because basically if if i for instance have no regulation and i'm and i want to cruise very quickly i can i can play around with this and you'll see that 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 depending on on how quickly i i uh, i want to go i can i can do all sub methods in in slice on these specific task objects and it will improve performance. But what it can also do is slow down the the performance of your client. And, and so you want to kind of play around with that and get the best performance that you can out of your tasker um, and using using uh, you know all sub methods in slice. And and it's really only effective on an input read, an output calc, an output send, and uh, and alarms, because those are the only plural objects that we're dealing with here. Okay. Um, so, server tasking basics. Uh, when you enable the server, the server will scan all the objects within the, the configuration. It will locate all the tasker objects, and then it will assemble those in a list. So it will remember where all the tasker objects are. From that point on, it will start its token passing to all the tasker objects and over to the client interactions. Okay. What, it, what that means, though, is if you add a tasker after you if you had to add any tasker object in your configuration while your server while your server is is on it's not going to recognize that because it, it that server that that new new tasker object is not going to be in the list so if you add a tasker and you want it to start tasking you have to turn the server off turn it back on okay and i can i can show you how that works so here if i if i add a tasker here called new tasker okay and you'll see I'm not getting any performance because I'm not actually in, it isn't actually in that list. By going down to my server, turning it to false, turning it to true, now I, I'll reassemble and, and sure enough, that new tasker is, is now tasking, okay? So that's a, that's a way of um, adding taskers. Oops, always does that. Why does it do that? So, uh, Now, once tasking, the server passes its token to each task, tasker sequentially. So it'll assemble that list and pass the token to this tasker, then this one, then this one, then this one, sequentially. Um, and again, those taskers will only do one underlying task all the way down to a sub method. In that case, pass it all the way back, un unless you've configured the task object to, to do more of that more in that thing, or if the tasker object has, let's say, a guaranteed time slice. Once all the taskers are, all those taskers are, you know, serviced with the token passing, it will then go into this quick loop, which is basically servicing clients, okay, and then it'll continue back to the taskers, and you can change how that how it services those those clients using the client priority. So here's here's what it looks like. So here's the first pass. So I'm I'm gonna these are actually rep represent the the next five slides are are pass one through five. This is a configuration here of a piece of equipment which has a tasker with some task objects. And that first task object is, is tied to inputs, which has three input objects below it, okay? The second piece of equipment has a, a tasker which has two inputs below it, okay? So, so the first thing that will happen is we're going to start with the new tasker. It's going to pass the token to the task object, which will pass it over to the inputs object, which passes it to the input object, which executes then passes that token back up the chain to the, to the server, which then goes down to the next tasker, passes that to the, its task object, um, or to its, its tasker, to the task object, to its underlying method call, to its sub-method call, and then back up. And then we loop around, we take care of the client interactions, and then we come back, at which point this tasker says, okay, I'm not done with my task object one yet because my inputs isn't done reading all of its input objects. So it'll come back in here, and what you'll see pass two is, so this is pass one, this is pass two, and now everything's the same. However, it goes to the second input object, comes back out. This one goes to its second input object, okay? Now the next time, the next pass, 
because this only had two input objects, this will actually transition down to the, to the second task object. So this will bounce down to its second task object and perform whatever method call that is, whereas the, the first tasker is still on the on, still reading inputs. And so it will, it will go down to the third input. Then the next pass through, the bottom tasker goes to, the, to the, its last task object. The top tasker is going to its second one. And then the next pass, what we would assume is that this tasker two recycles. And so sure enough, it's back to its original input call. Okay, so, so you, you can see that depending on how many underlying tasks and inputs and outputs and alarms, one tasker might, might operate much quicker than the other tasker just because it has fewer things to do. And, and so, so basically, uh, you're going to see that if you have multiple multiple equipment configurations like this, okay? Um, so, what other considerations that you want to do? Okay, so it's, it's important to to set up your your server and your taskers correctly. When you increase the client priority, the screens will be, be, be much more responsive, but the tasker performance will drop. You want to make sure that that if you want to increase, you know, improve client um, trans or you know screen. Uh, updates and refreshes and new screen updates, uh, you can increase that client priority, but always look back at your tasker performance to make sure that you're not slowing down the control performance too much. Okay. Um, when your main tasker operates slowly, two to three seconds, for, for example, you might have to add an additional tasker called a fast tasker to perform fast control of things like vacuum receivers or whenever you have time proportioned outputs. And that's because you know, on these very large, large, you know, systems where you might have two, three, four hundred inputs and an equal number of outputs, it's going to take a while to get through a, the, the main tasker. And in that time period, you're going to have a difficult time of, of controlling time proportioning where you want it to go very quickly on, off, on, off, or when you want to control something very quickly as well. So you might have to create a separate tasker, operate that much quicker. It has fewer, fewer ultimate tasks, but it'll, it'll be kind of in parallel with the main tasker. Um, in most cases, as I said before, you can in improve the, the tasker operations by, by using all sub-methods in slice on those alarms, output calc, and, 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 in, and input um, do reads. But again, make sure that you're not creating a real sluggish environment for your, for your client. Because if, if, those, if those underlying plural objects have a lot of inputs and a lot of outputs, Telling it to do it all those in one slice might create a little hang every time it does that. Um, in in order to speed up client or other quicker taskers, you, you, you can you can um, you can uh, incorporate a minimum task frequency, which will slow down or regulate down the the taskers that you don't need to operate too quickly. So if you have a tasker operating at a half a second and you're per perfectly fine with it operating at two seconds, use minimum task you know frequency and that will that will slow things down. Um, and again, if you want to restrict the clients from from grabbing information between the operation of, of some tasks, you have to use connect to next. Connect to next with those. And don't use connect and next on, on all the tasks because that's basically the same as telling it to do all tasks in slice, which is one of the tasker functions. But but you can say task one and two and three get connected together. That way I'm not updating my my screen uh, with incorrect information. Okay. So that is uh, that's the end of this training. Uh, you, you've hopefully learned a little bit more about uh, you know, servers and taskers and task objects and and uh, It'll give you a, a, a lot more information to, to go by when you're when you're trying to tackle you know some of those 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 fast tasking uh, uh, operations uh, in your configurations. Okay, thanks.